Nick, I'm Chantal. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm going to preface this by saying that I'm a trans man. So I used to be a girl, and the reason I think that this is a great rule um, is I think no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers. Um, for three months, you build quality foundation with your partner in friendship, um, which is not talked about enough and how that's needed to be sustainable for long term relationships. Um, so if that also that time teaches you, is this someone I want to have a long term relationship with? Um, it makes I think it also adds more security on both ends. Um, and then it does also teach you, well, if it doesn't work out, I'm very grateful that I didn't, you know, sleep with them or I didn't um, send them photos or like anything like that. Because um, if it turns out they're, you know, an asshole, it, um, <laughs> you, you know, you think about those things. Um, and I definitely wish I would have, like, before I transitioned, had that rule. Um, just because I think that I, I jumped into things a lot because I felt pressured. Yeah. Um, as a girl, um, it felt very much like I had to kiss on the first day or, like, well, oh, we're three weeks into the relationship and you don't want to sleep with me. Um, meanwhile, I'm battling the fact that I didn't even like men in the first place. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm on, <laughs> I'm, I joined the enemy side. So I, that's just, I'm sorry. It wasn't a choice. Um, but I over, like, I just think it builds a strong foundation for friendship, um, which is good. If you're going for a long-term marriage, it teaches you about what you guys both want in the relationship. Um, what your goals are, um, if you have similar views on things like children or um, how you want to live, like if you want to live in a house, if you want to be doing the van life, um, where you want to live, um, is your career going to take you places where you might potentially have to move? Like, these are all important things that you learn in the first three months. Um, and I think that generally the first three months in relationships traditionally without this rule is kind of very like honeymoony phase and it can be a potential for um, an abusive partner to love bomb you or, you know, grab that attention. And then, you know, at that three month mark, that person is going to start, you know, showing their true colors way earlier into it. And so by having this rule, you're actually, I think, uh, staying away from potentially getting into an abusive relationship because you're not jumping into it because you're being love bombed. Um, but I don't know much more about your rule. I literally just saw your post saying that's the criteria. Debate me <laughs> on it. And I joined your live and I was like, these are my thoughts. So can you tell me actually more about your rule and so I can learn more? I thought you were going to debate me because you made all my points for me. You oh. you literally you literally made all the points that I make in order to help people understand why this rule is important. You made all oh. of them. I'll I'll add one more. I'll add one more. It keeps us from playing a hoping game where we kiss and have sex and hope the person we've chosen is a decent human being. Where we oh. hope they're going to be what it is like if we if we think of our criteria of who it is we're looking for kind thoughtful generous impulse control long-term thinking wants to commit to me shares my goals and timelines than life right if we think about everything that they are do i want to kiss and have sex and hope that they're what i'm looking for if they have kids do i want to kiss and have sex and hope they introduce me to their kids and their family so it's all about not playing a hoping game if those things are not there you don't kiss them and let's say like introducing kids like i did a live earlier and somebody um said i don't introduce somebody to my kids until i've known them for at least a year and so it's no kissing until it's there right so okay. you know you you get a certain way down the road you haven't kissed them yet because you're using that no kissing for three months zero but they haven't talked about when you're going to meet their kids and then you go hey by the way when am i going to meet your kids and they go oh, I'm not ready for that yet. I'm not quite comfortable for that yet. And so then you say, that's okay, take your time. 
I'm just not comfortable kissing somebody who's not comfortable with me. Right. I mean, if it's not an enthusiastic, yes, it's not a yes, in my opinion. Um, yeah. It's just, I think that like on every level. So if that's introducing kids, if that's having sex, if that's kissing um, it, you know, yeah. So when I said I was pro, I mean, like I'm pro your rule based yeah. on it. Cause I, this, know, I, I love it, this. it was I like my this. thoughts on it already. Cause I've had both sides of the experience. Um, but do you think that I'm 22 I'm, I'll, I turned 23 in May. Do you think that um, me being my age and because I have the emotional maturity because I um, matured faster because I, I was a girl. Yeah. Um, do you think that that um, is good and plays a role in like... So one thing, you know, because I get this question, right? Like, um you know, I'm, I'm trans, I'm gay, um, I'm young, I'm old, can this rule work for me? And I say, this is logic. Logic is ageless. It doesn't care how old you are. And it doesn't care who you love. Okay. I think it's just difficult because a lot of people my age are, that's some people that's all they want you know they're the, that's all they're interested in right now and then other people are yeah. like no I'm ready for marriage and so it's hard to find like a happy medium in between the two where you know, you I know I'm not it. ready to get married absolutely yeah. but I would like to date but I don't want to <laughs> sleep around you know um so yeah I, I just thought it'd be fun for to come on and kind of uh <laughs> say my thoughts about it I don't know yeah so I mean it, it's it sounds like you just want to do what the rule is which is I'm going to talk to people until somebody rises above the crowd yeah yeah well I'm currently dating someone but in general I think um we we didn't kiss the first uh three months of our relationship um, but that was kind of by happenstance, yeah. um, not because of the rule, but we built a very firm foundation in friendship. And so I think it supported our relationship in a way that was far beyond relationships that I've had prior. Yeah. Um, and so that's why I, when I saw the post, I was like, absolutely, that's correct. I'm going to I'm going to go on and tell all these people that like a man can say this. Yes, I'm. A trans man, but I I am You're, a man. And... You are a man, believe me. I it's, it's like it's, it's for I. Um, I just I wanted to sprinkle some men. hope onto the trash that is men, because <laughs> yeah. it's it's it's, it's, tough. <laughs> it's tough. When I talk about sexuality, because I get like. You know, I'm, I'm open-minded about porn. Porn was on cave drawings. Like, I'm a social scientist, right? So when I talk about porn and sexuality, I actually, I, I look at trans, I talk about trans men. And I talk about the experience of going from estrogen to testosterone. And maybe we can discuss this for a second if you're willing to. Oh, absolutely. But what I saw in the research is that the sex drive goes, whoa, what the fuck? When you transition, what's your experience? Yeah, you're not kidding. Uh, ah, <laughs> so um, the first three months are definitely like, whoa, what is happening? So at first, what I noticed was like my body was almost trying to like fight it off because it was like, that's too much testosterone. That's not normal. So my estrogen was spiking as well to try to like balance it. Um, and then I've been on I've transitioned for over five years now, so obviously my body is used to it. But the spike in libido is insane. Like when I saw, when I would hear from all these men all the time, like, oh, you don't understand, like, it's just so high. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, but then being on the other side of it, it really is um, so frequent. And um, it happens like, just randomly too like and it's it's wild uh the libido goes up your fat like redistributes to like where males hold their fat instead of like you know the um hips or the butt area 
Um, and that's weird. And then your vocal cords drop. Sorry, what did you say? Even your hands get bigger. Yeah, my hands got bigger. Uh, my feet got bigger. I, I grew like two inches, um, which is not always common to grow taller. Um, but I started when I was 18. And as yeah. you know, you know, that's still at an age where you can grow, especially for um, girls. So I thought that that was um, a really interesting experience in my transition. Um, the libido spike, it was a lot to deal with. I'll be honest with you, because dealing with the libido as a female for so many years and not having it be at the caliber that it is for a man, I, it was a, it was a little, it was a lot. I'm not going to lie. I was like, is it really all the time? Like, can you stop? Like, it, it, like at points yeah. I would be annoyed with it. Like, and then yeah. it starts to calm down a little bit. And then you have your ebbs and flows as you do, you know, naturally. Um, also with that too, um, that libido spike, I noticed instead of reacting to situations um, where I would usually cry, I was more angry instead. Um, so that's just something interesting I found with being on T is that it, uh, it just kind of changes that as well. I, I mean, everything, it's so wild. Um, and then the vocal drop and then the facial hair and getting all the hair follicles coming in, um, that's weird too, and kind of uncomfortable and to deal with like, the difference of even your body smelling like a man. Like, that's something that a lot of people don't talk about. In the, but it's a very interesting thing because if you think about it, you know, the pheromones that you produce as a female are different than a, a male. So when you transition, if your testosterone is higher, your scent, like, your changes. And I wasn't expecting that. And so to like smell like a man I'm like this is gross like I get why they're constantly like showering you know and be, like because like as a girl you know I would shower like maybe every other day as a man it's like I want to shower twice a day sometimes like okay. can you produce more sweat um it's it's all very really interesting um but yeah the libido spike is absolutely insane and um, it depends on how you do your testosterone. I do shots. Um, so I have a weekly injection. Um, I, I think my cycle is still female, like my hormone cycle, but I just have more testosterone. And I do notice that throughout the week, different days of the week, um, my libido is going to jump. Like for example, um, the day of my shot, when my T's at my like lowest, for some reason, my libido is like crazy high. Um, day after, I don't want anything to do with it. And then throughout the week, obviously, yes, it goes up, my libido goes up, and then like it dips. So it's very interesting to like figure it out through the week as well, through your next injection, um, since you're constantly having to do that. Um, yeah. I love it. Oh, my baby's home. My husband's home. Uh, so <laughs> I love, I love my man. Baby love, did you take a shower? Yeah. Oh, look at you so early. Um, early. Tomorrow already. It's tomorrow already. <laughs> uh, one thing that I say, um, and I say that actually in uh, this book here that I wrote for women so that they can choose the right partner. But one thing I say in here is, is the female brain cannot understand the male body. This oh, yeah. brain cannot understand what it's like to exist in a male body. Yeah. I mean, it's weird because there's been studies that have shown that trans people, their brains, um, the way that like our we synapse or and our wires are a little bit different than cis yeah. people um and so for example mind fire in a way that are more male dominant traits i guess and so it makes sense that i would 
transition, but that hasn't been totally researched enough. Um, I'm really interested about that though. Um, I love research yeah. into the brain and in like a long time ago when I first started looking into trans people, uh, one of the very first studies I came across was exactly that, that people who are trans have a male brain inside a female body. Yeah, it's odd because it's like that because I knew from, you know, the my whole entire life, I always knew. Um, but the growing up I was raised female and so that that's a completely different experience right like the way my older brother was treated in comparison to me entirely different um because you know with boys it's like all right go out have your fun you know and with girls it's very much like no safe protect like um and especially where I'm from which is Utah so um very religious uh dominating um factor that had a role in a lot of things but um uh it, yeah it's it's weird i just sorry i lost my train of thought but nick yeah would you be willing to do a podcast with me a po- <laughs> me yes why <laughs> Uh, because you are articulate, you are intelligent, um, and you are open. So you are perfect. Thank you. I'm a poet, so I kind of have to be articulate. Um, I would love to do that. That's an amazing opportunity. Thank you. I Um, am. Wow. There we go. How can I follow you? Uh, I see her. Oh. I'm trying to figure out how I. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write this down. So that Maybe I if I comment, oh, people are calling me handsome and sweet. Yeah, you guys like, are so nice. Love you. Do you, are, can you read my comments? Can you read the comments from my people? They are loving yeah. you. That's sweet. I I loved the beginning before I hopped on. Everyone's like, get the popcorn. I know this is gonna be bad, and they were like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Maybe if I comment here, wait. I just wrote down your this username. Might work. I'm gonna Okay, I also it. just commented in your chat, so you should be able to just click on my comment and follow me there, there as well. Here we go. Hello. Um, okay. but that's an amazing opportunity and I would love to uh do that. That sounds okay. awesome. We're friends. Are you are you already following me? Yeah, I've been following you for a while. I see a couple of your videos on my For You page every now and then, um, but they're kind of sporadic. Uh, I just think that it's always good to have help, and I'm really interested in psychology and um, sociology, and you know, just this like body language. I love, I love studying body language more than anything. It's just my, oh, it's like my niche. That's just so fun. Um, Dog but they're just like hobbies. I don't know. Uh, what? Are you a dog trainer at all? Do you train animals? Um, I have a dog. I don't train um, uh, animals like professionally, no. But I am kind of. It's weird in my household. So I I still live with my parents. I'm chronically ill. Um and. We have dogs, and they don't listen to anyone but me. Oh, and it's just go. weird because I'm the most <laughs> soft-spoken and kind of, you know, laid back. Um, but when I put like, you know, the voice on to get a dog to do something, they'll do it like that. When my dad can sit there and yell at them for ten years, and they won't move um, because it's not it's not angry, frustrated that works. It's calm, assertive that works. Oh, makes sense. I didn't I, know that. Yes. Okay. So let's let's you and I like I I want to save some for the podcast. We're gonna repeat some of the stuff that we talked about because I I would love to have you come talk about how the female bot the female brain cannot ex, cannot cannot understand the male experience, and I want to talk about that. So we will be repeating some of the stuff that we talked about here because I'd like to bring. I'd like to bring this if you're willing to come back and talk to me about this, because this is something that I, I, I talk about frequently enough. And so 
for you to come and talk about this, it's like, ah, this is so exciting to me because I've researched it, but to have you come and talk about this and affirm all of this and communicate this to the people that I talk to, I think would be very, uh, like an opening experience for a lot of people. Um, I agree. So I'd love to- I, I, I think education above all is the most important thing. My mom was a teacher for 30 years and, um, learning things is great and hearing it straight from the source is the best education you can get i think um so i'm very excited um uh, so i can't wait to hear from you and i'm sure we'll talk soon um and uh i'll go ahead and leave in case any other men want to come in here and debate you or if you have to get off but um can you remind me your name my husband some salsa guacamole Ooh, <laughs> can I ask you how long you've been married? Uh, we just had our 10th wedding anniversary in January. We've been together for 17 years and we've known each other for 19 years. Oh, wow. That's a long time. So you guys have like a lot of history, a lot of memories, a lot of love. That's a lot beautiful. of fighting, a lot of love. We yeah. fought for 10 years. We haven't had a fight in seven years. Wow. Yeah. Do you think that like your education in relationships in general helps with like cool, like keeping things like cool down or like not getting to a level where you're having a fight because you're having more open communication or. So uh, we used to fight because of my insecurity. Um, And then I took the social sciences that I, I, I learned and added more information and meditated and downloaded even more. And all of this combination together helped me develop tools that finally got me to be more in control of my thoughts, my emotions and my behaviors and helped me understand the kind of behaviors I should be exhibiting in my relationship in order to get the best out of myself and my partner. Wow, I'm that's amazing. I'm super excited too that you're spiritual and you like meditate because I'm a medium. I <laughs> that's what that's what I do professionally. Um and I'm a level two Reiki practitioner. Um mm-hmm. and I've actually passed away three times uh in my life. So wow. I am very, very close to the veil. Um because I've yeah. been over and back <laughs> a couple I times. I love this. Um, over the span of years, it was, I, I passed once at 14, once at 17, and then, uh, once in just this last December, um, just so it's crazy downloading. Like every time that happens, my gifts spike even more, like, um, and it, it's just a wild thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm, yeah, real death, actual flatline, <laughs> not here anymore. I, I passed over (laughs) um it's not as as scary as people think I don't know um I think that at some point you get a kind of overwhelming peace that takes over yeah and I've had really painful deaths and so like I felt my I felt my organ shut down I felt my heart stop beating um my my mother, uh, well, my birth mother, she passed away at 27, unfortunately, from a uh, heroin overdose. Um, and she's held my hand every time that I've died. And I, I think that, and that, you know, she kind of helped save me. That's my personal belief. Um, yeah. But yeah, anyways, that's kind of me. Uh, I'm I'm a mixed bag of a whole bunch of things, <laughs> so I, love that, uh, though. I just thought I it was like cool that. that you meditate and you get downloads because I I do that as well, just kind of in a different way. We get the downloads that we need, my love. Yeah, I agree, and at the time you need it, which is something that I always struggled with because I I felt like I was always kind of an impatient person, and then. I was taught a lot of lessons, like by when I was finally practicing patience, then it would come and it was like, oh, so I think that just translates into life as well. Like, you know, if you're constantly wanting something, um, 
to an unhealthy degree, you know, and then it doesn't seem like you're going to get it. And then when you finally start to, okay, I'll focus on other things, but I know this is my dream. And then it seems like the, it opens. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No cap. Uh, I have absolutely died. Um, (laughs) I'm not going to show you my medical records, uh, but I can tell you that, yeah, I can tell you the days I've died every single time. Mm. But uh, I, that's a weird thing to lie about in the first place. I've been, didn't do that. <laughs> Sorry, he's just responding to chat. <laughs> Somebody said we thought he was going to challenge Chantal, but this is so much better. And I agree. Um, I need to head into the kitchen. And that means my Wi-Fi might cut out. Um, so I want to give you guys fair warning. You can you can read the stuff that's happening in the comments next. So you're welcome to stay and oh, and okay, cool. question. Um, if it pauses, um, it's just because I'm switched. I have to walk through the house and get it onto my Wi-Fi extender. Um, yeah. So if it pauses is just going to do it for a moment. No worries. Um, I didn't go into cardiac arrest. Well. It depends. Okay, so the first time I was 14, so I'm going to be honest, I don't remember much of it. I really blocked that one out. Um, And that was actually um, an attempt. And then the second time I was 17. And I... I I also it was also an attempt and I I felt um my organ shut down like one at a time like I I I would get pain in my liver and then in my kidneys and then I could slowly feel the function stop like and then it was very focused on my heart my body was entirely cold and I could feel my heart struggling to beat um and this was all at two in the morning, 4 p.m. The next day, my heartbeat was still only at 24 beats per minute. So that's when I was brought back. I, After all those hours, still at 24 beats per minute. May 24th, I'll never forget. Um, and, and then in December, we don't know what caused the one in December, uh, I have a lot of chronic health issues, but basically what happened was my blood pressure bottomed out. Um, just, they thought it was like I had se- severe dehydration. I went in, um, they, they couldn't get my IVs in. Um, they finally got my IVs in. They dropped five bags of fluids on me. They were pumping me with medications and I had the same feeling. I, I, I felt my organ shut down. I knew I was dying. And I could tell because it was a panic. It was so panicked. Um, I had, um, I went to the best hospital in my state. And um, the weird thing about it was I, I put my grandmother's ring on that she gave to me before she passed. And um, I just kind of heard my head to go there. And so I did. And yeah, December 18th, um, I had, I think it was like nine trauma surgeons or trauma specialists, you know, nurses, a trauma surgeon working on me at the same time. And they couldn't get, they couldn't get me. Um, And then they ended up having to go through my arterial vein um and they were really panicked so they almost went through the one in my neck um and I don't remember much that's when I started to die um and I saw my mom in the room and she actually gave me a choice this time and was like she asked me do you want to cross over and I was like no I just fell in love I'm too young I don't want to like I need to stay and she was like, okay. And she dropped her hand and uh, and then I was back in the, the hospital and I was screaming from the pain of them going into an arterial vein because if you've never had that, 
when you're awake with you know no pain meds or anything like it's it put me into enough shock that it kind of brought me back to life a little bit um and then they worked on me and I was in the ICU for quite a while um and because that one was so recent, I do have um, PTSD from that one. I just recently, I had to go to the emergency room last Saturday, in fact, and at the same hospital. And going back there was actually more triggering than I expected it to be. Because um, it's just a hospital, but I didn't realize that, like, you know, I was, I was in the same place that I died, you know, a couple months earlier. And it just... Every time it was um, incredibly painful. I can't even describe the pain of feeling your heart struggle to beat. It's indescribable pain. And then there's just kind of like this wash over a piece where you're like, okay, it's going to be okay. Whatever happens, it's going to be okay. It's like when I saw my mom there, it was like a wash of peace and I knew I wasn't here anymore. I was kind of in between um and then I was brought back when they got into my arterial vein and then they were able to give me medication because they weren't getting it through my other two IVs it just wasn't working um I mean the piece it does sound good I I know that it sounds good but it's like life is good too it once you feel that level of like total like nothing on your shoulders, it's hard to want to come back. I'll be very honest with you, but I had a choice to come back and I absolutely would choose it every single time because life here is worth living. Life here is special and precious and people love you. And so if anyone in the comments is like thinking like, oh, maybe you're not feeling too good or you're struggling with depression or, you know, anything like that. I know it's been a rough couple of years and it's been a really hard time for everyone. But if you feel like that, please ask for help. Um, and then I know that you'll get a good treatment plan. You'll get taken care of. Um, the peace is not worth it. Cause once you cross over, you still have work to do. It, I promise like as, as a medium, my mom passed from heroin, which was obviously an accident. Um, she worked for years to unpack all the stuff that on earth that she didn't, you know, get to do. The fact that she died unexpectedly. Um, the work isn't, you know, necessarily done, you know. So what, whatever is here that is important to you, hold on to that. Because I, I promise you that, like, you don't want to let that go. I promise you. It, I know it sounds tempting, tempting. I know it does, believe me. But it's so not worth it. I've had two attempts and then one accident. And I promise you when it's an accident, it is so, so very different. Because when you're not thinking in that state of mind of this is a good thing to do, you don't want to go. You don't. And your body will fight it. And it should fight it because you should be here. Because every person here is special and matters. And they have their own talents and gifts. And even if it's something as simple as, you know, you have a dog that you love or the sunset was really pretty tonight. Find something to be grateful for each day and something to hold on to because it is so, so worth it. So I just wanted to say that um, because the peace, it's not, it's not worth the feeling of falling in love or jumping mm -hmm. in cold water or any of the human experiences that you get to have. There's kisses from your partner. Exactly. So much better. So that's to anyone in here. I just wanted to say that. You are such a beautiful soul. We love you. Thank you. I've we love you. Pretty you hard. Are so much love on this page. I love it. Oh, I, I love it too. It's very kind. Um, it, it's very kind. Um, 
Wow. Well, we, have a, we have a very safe community here. It's really beautiful, but I just wanted to share that because I know that, you know, this is a rough, it's been a rough couple of years. It's been hard. I know that my depression is certainly like, it's been kicked a couple of times, but life is awesome. And like, exactly like she said, that feeling of kissing your partner that feeling of snuggling up to like the person you love most in the world, you know, the feeling of walking your dog or the rain on your skin. Those are all beautiful things that I think I definitely took for granted. Yeah. So uh, I really hope, Oh, my lights are flickering. So I know that's that my mom does that a lot. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. As a way to say like, Hey, uh, cause you know, the spirit has, can do some funny things with electricity. Um, yeah. but she agrees with me. So, um, uh, anyway. I'm going, so I'm going to be messaging you, Nick. I'm going to, so I'm going to message you here on TikTok. Um, I'm going to ask you for your email address. I'm going to email you a link so that you can find a time that works for you. And we're going to meet up again on Zoom. And we're going to awesome. have a conversation. We're going to teach people together. That's going to be beautiful. And I'm so excited. Um, and then yeah. just to answer this last comment before I go, yeah. um, I do do mediumship readings. Um, that's my job. That's my profession. I'm a medium. <laughs> um, I've been practicing for, ooh, like, well like my whole life really I've always been gifted but I've really been practicing hard and um honing it for about five years honestly so about as long as my transition which is funny that that coincided that as soon as I felt comfortable in my body I was able to uh, make it type hello again I like that type hello again into the chat so that um people can follow you Oh, that's kind. Thank you. Yeah, if you guys want to follow me um, and hit me up for reading, I do very affordable prices because I think that a lot of people in my line of work tend to not have those. Um, like you'll see like, you know, $400 for like 30 minutes and it's like insane. And uh, I just think that everyone should have access to being able to speak with their loved one. I, I I just don't think that it's I think that should be an opportunity for everyone in my opinion so um, anyway I'm gonna head out now so you can either you know uh, go be with your husband I'm sure that's what you want to do have some time with your hubby um, and I got some kisses I need to get in yes you do <laughs> save every one of those I um, do <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad. All right. Well, it's been nice meeting you and talking to you. Um, you and we'll talk soon. And then the chat, thank you for being lovely and kind. And I appreciate the coins. That's so incredibly generous. Um, so I hope you all have a beautiful night. And that's all. Okay. Goodbye. Good night, Nick. I'll talk to you soon. Good night.